What's up everybody, Steve DiGiorgio from Death to All up here in the Netherlands. I want to say hello to everyone, especially the Hungary and Impact Metal channel. Especially someone who's absolutely everything is brand new. You know, it's just, I couldn't familiarize myself with the music. So I trust the composer, in this case, Dave Mustaine, and then the, the engineer or the producer, the guy who's been doing everybody over and over. He's used to the tiny microscopic part. So I just trust them to say, hey, you know, this part, do more, you know, little suggestions, but pretty normal for a session. So it wasn't like this mean guy, blah, blah, blah. not at all, you know, some people have asked that, and it's, it's so funny how absolutely normal it was, it was, it was awesome, you know, just to be in a very familiar role, but then go, oh wait, you know, I've never been up in this arena before, I, I got invited up to the big dogs, but, other, but when it was time to put the head down and, and work, Absolutely no. So, no, he was 
like I said, normal amount of suggestions, but of course I'm asking for things too because it's a lot of stuff and I was only there for two weeks, so. But no, he was fucking great. It was cool to meet him finally after. I didn't know him. The Testament guys really know him from the past, but I never crossed paths with him, so it was my first time meeting him. So that was cool too. Brand new, but quite great. And what do you think about the album? What did you like it? Or how would you describe it? Uh, Just to spoil something for the fans. It's, I mean, it's making that. Mm -hmm. I don't, <clears throat> I don't have that kind of opinion. I was in and out quick. Um, I haven't really heard any of the final stuff of it either. Mm -hmm. But I, I've, when I was in the studio, I heard all the vocals and I heard all the final parts. But I don't know. I think I was just in work mode, and then I immediately left that session to another one. So mm -hmm. I had to switch off that and learn a bunch of no new songs again. So I don't know. I think I. It's like a dream. You wake up and you're like, I guess that happened. But you know, you got more stuff to do. So, I don't know. Um, I enjoyed the material. It's it's fucking thrash, and I've heard from Dave himself, and, and Dirk also told me there's probably a couple songs on there that possibly might be the fastest Megadeth songs, or maybe the fastest of the later stuff. I don't know how you know. First, when everyone's young, it's fast. So I don't know how it compares to that, but I guess it, the fastest songs in a very long time. So it's very alive you know it's not trudging it's it's got a lot of energy and it's thrash and it's sounds like negative so Safely. yeah i don't i don't normally have a great opinion of anything i work on like what it's gonna be i just it's just part of one piece of everything and i do my part and then i just kind of let everyone else tell me what it is so i don't mean to you know focus on that band specifically but generally i don't know what the fuck to think <laughs> I'm not asking that because of Megadeth, but did you apply for the position, uh, the bass player position for Metallica back in the day? Never. Didn't even cross your mind? Well, for fun. Mm. Yeah, I could, you know, you try to imagine. The first time they needed a bass player, I think it was uh, 1986. That time, maybe, I entertained the idea a little more because the singer for Exodus, uh, Paul, he was no longer in Exodus and he was kind of booking local bands. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he goes, you're my guy, man. I'm, I'm gonna represent you and I'm gonna give you this job. And I just kept telling him, I'm like, like, I'm 19 years old. They're all like 23 and they've already, I've never been on tour. I've never played on a real record. You know, they've all done that. They're not gonna want some new young kid. They're gonna want someone their age with their experience. Oh, no, 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 fuck that. I'm gonna get you the job, man. And of course, I accidentally was completely right that he wanted somebody their age level with their experience level when they got Jason, but that was the only time I thought, you know, because Paul Bailoff was just like, you're my guy, you're my guy, I'm going to get you the job, so I was just 19, you're like, wow, really? <laughs> but the next time they needed the bass player, no, I just, I'm like, no, that's, I mean, if they called me and said come, well, what would anyone do? Say fuck yeah, <laughs> but no, I thought it'd be too big of a, too big of a show. I don't know, too too much competition. I didn't want to see. Yeah. Now you're back at Def DTA again in Europe. Uh, how does it feel to play these Def classics decades after the release? Yeah. Fucking cool, man. These are these are the best songs to play live. They're from a personal perspective. They're really fun. You know, the physicality of them and the, the arrangements of parts is really fun to, to navigate that. But from the outside of personal perspective, I mean, it goes over great. People love these songs. People are going to love these songs forever. Death, Chuck just, fuck, I didn't know it at the time, but he's a visionary. You know, he knew what he was doing and he was writing songs that people like. And it's obvious, we play them and people enjoy them. That's the cool thing about this band, that's all we do. We're just here to play live music. There's we're not some big new idea, you know, we're not trying to take over for death. We're just reminding people that we were there and show them what we did and have a good show and that's it. You know, so it's awesome. And we get along super great. You know, we're pretty pretty tight as friends and um, 
we all respect each other's musicality. That's a big fucking love fest, you know. We just no, but it it's true. We we enjoy everything about it. This is this is a really fun band, especially because of the uniqueness of it. There's no touring cycle. There's no timing like album tour, composition albums. You know, it's just like, okay, you guys ready? You ready? Okay, it looks good. Let's go play. And then we play these twenty year old songs and just enjoy us. Is there any Death song that you haven't played live but you always wanted to? Well, yeah, and we are now. I I really enjoy playing Secret Face from the Human Album. And funny, we talked Gene into doing it, and so he learned it. He oh, plays it awesome. And so that was one I always wanted to play and we just never tried it. And so now this tour, we're finally doing it. And this is the third show of the tour. So We've only played it one time because the second show was a little bit more condensed set for a festival. Because all the songs we prepare, it's over two hours. We have that much that we can play, but then every location has, you know, you guys get 30, you guys get 60, you guys get 90, whatever the time we have to adjust. And so the first show, we played all the songs, every single one of them. We went like a marathon set. And then the next show was a structured festival in. So we've only played Secret Face one time live so far. And uh, I believe it's in the set tonight. They're down there cutting a few out now because of the time. We have a little bit of a... have to fit in the right time, so they're cutting some songs out. But that's... yeah, so that, that's one I was hoping for. Well, a few years ago we were talking about the uh, second country of the night album. Do you have any positive news on the uh, release? On the release? No, because we have to... Well, let me take you back. In December, we went to Florida for a Chuck Memorial. It was a lot of a lot of ex-members, and we formed two bands. And I was in the first band, and in the first band, we had a lot of members, so we traded off. And uh, during this show, I was with Shannon, um, hanging out with him, driving with him and stuff. And and we started throwing around ideas of starting it up again. Um, Eric Greif was a big problem holding it back. He wanted to be in charge of it. He wanted to do this. He made all these calls. And really none of them were based on the musicians recording it. There, There's a lot of truth to the data being corrupted. and That stuff's all true. And that's why it's really hard for us to finish this thing. But I had a couple ideas I thought of. And I threw him at Shannon, and he seemed to kind of, oh, this could be possible. Mm -hmm. We're talking about it, and, you know, when you present an idea, it can go two ways. It could go and die, or maybe we were fine. So we're at that point. Mm -hmm. Maybe it just takes a shit and dies, and we're back to never doing the album. But at least I put some ideas in his head, and we talked about some possibilities. So if we can realize those then we'll have some positive news but at least at least we brought it up again so who knows it's a difficult it's a, it's so weird so fucking weird the history of this recording but anyway i thought i had some good ideas and we'll see yeah do you see any chance for a control deny tour no 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 no, no. um it's hard enough doing Death to All without Chuck. Fortunately, Max fucking kicks ass. You know, we put on a good show with Max. Now, as you know, Control Tonight has a different singer who's there and available. But without Chuck, we'd have to get someone to replace him on guitar. And Richard works for a radio show, and he can't get a big amount of time off for touring. So he's really locked into his full-time job. So we would be out Chuck, we'd be out Richard. And at that point, it's like, okay, it's... One guy's hard enough. Replacing Chuck is very hard. And we're lucky to have Max, but for Control Tonight, it's a little too hard for two guys to be... to find two different guys. No, I don't think so. But when I see you next year, Ask me again and we'll see. Because okay. we do talk, mm -hmm. the band members. We're still friends and we still talk. We, we 
bring up ideas like this all the time just for fun. And once in a while, one of them might be real. So I don't know. But at this point, no. <laughs> what do you think about the Death by Metal documentary? Yeah, I think I think all the guys who played in the lineup, Chris and Sean and me and Gene, Bobby, Shannon, and Richard, you know, everyone, Richard's on it. Okay, I think so. Um, or not. Anyway, the, Terry, Terry, I think, I think those, us, you know, we're speaking from experience, so it's, it's history, it's fact. The people on the periphery, you know, the people on the outside of the playing lineup, I don't know, everyone has, you know, it's their perspective, and I'm not saying that they are not speaking truth, but it it's speaking of a different side of Chuck, and I don't know. It's fine. It's it's cool that he has a movie about him out there. You know? so the, the, anyway, that's my opinion about the inside of the movie, but overall the project, Felipe, the guy who did, he did a fucking great job. He was very passionate about it. I talked to him a few times about it while, as he was making it, and uh, yeah, I think it's what he did is amazing putting that together. Yeah. So props to Philly.